<laughs> Tommy Davidson, welcome to Comedy Hype. I appreciate you uh, having another interview with us. Thank mm -hmm, you for taking mm -hmm, the time. Mm -hmm. Coming uh, back. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never Almost a year ago, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah, just about, just about, yeah. How have you been this past year? Uh, things have been good. I've been working, you know, just, just kind of taking it easy. And writing. Developing like I always do. Yeah, see you online. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Just hilarious and everything. Yeah, yeah. I just started doing some um, some IG stuff. I hadn't done that stuff before, but it's it's actually fun. Mm -hmm, definitely. Yeah, was yeah. there um, some sort of uh, <sighs> hesitation going into the online world, um, being you know your return stand up? Not really. Not really. I'm just lazy. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, like I don't feel like it. Definitely. You yeah, know, yeah. It's, it's like there's a lot going on to keep the presence in IG and all that stuff. You got to keep on doing it. Definitely. Yeah. Whole time I'm like, job. you know, I'm all, I'm, I'm all about naps. Right. <laughs> Who you was know, it? Naps are good. Yeah. Definitely. So I want to um kind of go back to In Living Color. Can okay. I my favorite okay. sketch. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was you, you were in uh, Jim Carrey. He played this like late night talk show host, and I think okay. Kelly Cofield. She was the oh the first expert. one. Exactly. Yes. That was the first one. Yeah. You played um the black guy who was that the was the life. first episode. Oh, was it? Yeah. The very first. Pilot. I froze. Really. I froze on camera, man. Why? Ner because I, because I mean I worked all them years to get on that show, right? Mm -hmm. When that red light came on the camera, I was like, it all hit me. I was like, oh man, this is millions of people. How'd you overcome it? Damon. Damon walked up to me. He said, nigga, you work too hard. You better do this for your family, for you. You deserve it too. You funny too, man. Everybody needs to see you. It didn't Action. You know? wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's all it took. Huh? Yep, yep. He got up in my face too. He whispered to me. Yeah, you better come on, man. You know, you're driving that Nissan Sentra, man. <laughs> <laughs> Time to upgrade. Right, 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 right. right. So, um, what was the process like? Did you come up with your own characters on the show? All of us did. All of us did. So we would take our characters to the writers. Then the, the right, us and the writers would go to Keenan, mm -hmm. and Keenan would go through it with us, and he'd be like, he was he wasn't shy. He'd be like. Nah, man, it ain't funny, man. They ain't gonna make it this week or whatever. So we had to work hard to get our stuff on. Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of competition. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. Especially because mm -hmm. I know shows like SNL and Matt TV are kind of like in the same format. Mm -hmm, but those mm -hmm. are, Matt TV's an hour, SNL's 90 minutes. Right, Living right. Color's 30 minutes. Right, so, right. Uh, competition must have been that much harder. Yeah, we got a chance. But, but you know, it made us better. Mm -hmm. It made us better. Do you have it, a favorite character mm -hmm. you created? I created a character called Sweet Tooth Jones. He's a karate yeah. character, karate teacher with ball head right here right. and afro right here. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, yeah. Karate, protecting your body. Sugar bear, Lottie, Dottie. You remember that? Remember yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, my, that was one of my favorites. Yeah. So, uh -huh. and, um, and I know impressions were a great mm -hmm. part of In Living Color. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I love Keenan's Arsenio, his Mike mm -hmm, Tyson, mm -hmm, his Spike mm -hmm, Lee. Mm -hmm. uh, did any celebrities ever get like offended by the way they portrayed on the show? Did they ever vocalize that? Oh, there were only two. I think it was um, Arsenio Hall got real upset. He didn't like it at all. Really? Like with the long finger, you know, yes, yeah. uh, yes, <laughs> yes. And then he put his feet up in the air and both his, <laughs> and on the bottom of his feet said, Eddie Murphy. You know? <laughs> yeah, he didn't like that. And then um, surprisingly, the, the comedian that just died, the white guy. Uh, Louis? From Full House. Oh, Bob Saget? He didn't like it. Really? He didn't like that at all. Jim Carrey played Bob. Yeah. Look <laughs> at the funny video. <laughs> he ain't like that. He wrote us a letter. He, he was he was really? talking. Yeah, he ain't like it. What was in the letter? He ain't like it. The letter was like, hey man, F y'all. Wow. Yeah. He That's ain't like it. But he was a good friend of all of ours though. We were all comics in the right. in the comedy store. Exactly. So we were all surprised. We were like, really? Wow. Like, come on. But when you see him on on there's an explanation. When you see him on Full House, and you see him on the Funny America's funniest videos. It's not like his stand up. His stand up is like, hey, his stand up is like anybody else's. He goes raw. Too raw. <laughs> so he, I guess he thought we were trying to make fun of him because he was corny. I don't know. I don't know. But cool. God bless him. He was a good friend too. Yeah, this sketch never portrayed that stand up side of his. So no, no. So he, yeah. I think he was thinking we were trying to make fun of the fact that he was corny. We were just making fun of the fact that the show was corny. Yeah. And he was corny in the show. It's <laughs> fair. Yeah. So one of my favorite movies um, of yours was uh, Bamboozle. Mm. Uh, what made you sign on to that? Talk about what, it. What, what attracted you about that project? Actually, Spike. Spike came to L.A. He called me, hey, Tommy, I want to talk to you. I was like, hey, come on, man. So he, he came out to my office, sat at my desk, put his feet up on my desk, 
<laughs> I was cool because that's Spike Lee, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? And he said, I got a movie for you and you're the only one that can play it. He said, I want to follow you around all day. I said, okay. So I was running errands. This dude, <laughs> this dude was in my car all day and didn't say a word. Like he's just, you know, you rolling. I'm like, yeah, man. So, he, you know. So finally, at the end of the end, finally, before the day was over, I said, hey, man, if you don't say something to me, I'm not going to know what you're thinking. Then he finally started talking. He got back to my office. He said, you're the only one for it. He made me an offer in the, in, in the office. I was like, how am I going to do a movie for that? He was like, trust me, I want you to come three months earlier, spend time with me. Because I want you to help me write that script. So me and him, actually, we wrote that script. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and we did all that research for all those cartoons and all those all those old black and white you know portrayals of us and, and Amos and Andy and all that. So it was like, it was like an education mm -hmm. for me. Definitely, I know. He uh, like he like school me. Right, that's always been one of Spike's biggest mm -hmm. criticisms of the you know modern day minstrel show, mm -hmm. uh, criticizing mm -hmm. several UPN mm -hmm. and WB shows. Mm -hmm. um, whereas back in the day, you know, we had the Cosby Show, Fresh Prince, right, Martin, right, in Living Color, Living right. Single. Uh, what do you right. think got us away from like the black shows that seem to be for us bias into the modern day minstrel shows that? Um, like you know what? It's 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 really it's really it's really hard, hard to even even have a barometer of measure any of that stuff because you know all of us want to work. Mm -hmm. There's all these different you know what what are you gonna do? Mm -hmm. You know, are you gonna be politically correct? Or are you gonna work? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And the shows that he was talking about were before we had black writers and before we had, you know, and he was talking about society's treatment of us in television. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Now we go to that extreme, but it's hard to be like, it's hard to be like, I'm going to be an advocate for, you know, for every, everything must be right or whatever. I'm an actor yeah. and I'm a comedian. I'm a writer and things going to just get done. Right. You know what I mean? Things going to just get done. That's, that's the bottom line. Yeah. But, I called Spike for the Sammy movie. Sammy Davis. Sammy Davis Jr. movie. And I had got there, I acquired their rights and bought the rights. It cost me a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So he told me, you know, I said, man, if we do this right, we can get an Oscar. He said, I don't want no Oscar. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, oh, all right. And then when I seen the Oscars, he was, I know, you know. he looked like he wanted one. Yeah, right. Yeah. The hug. He was, yeah, he jumped in his Samuel Jackson's arms. And yeah. I was like, and I wanted to go in there with, you know, those safety cones that you see in the park a lot. Yeah. I want to grab one of those and just go in the office and go, I thought your ass ain't want one of them. You right, know what I mean? Yeah, right, you right, know. right. Exactly. Call them out. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so I read this in a um, complex article. Mm -hmm. uh, is it true that you were considered for the role of Smokey in Friday? Yeah. Really? Yeah, did you yeah, yeah. yeah. I did not, but Cube, I was driving down the highway. Cube just said, turn off the highway. He said, man, I'm working on this thing called Friday, man. You should... You know, you, you 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 should, you know, f with me on that, man. I was like, okay, I never really got a call back from him. You know, that was cool because because Chris was really really good in it. Right, definitely. Really good in it. But then when I showed up to the set of um, it was Friday. It was the other. It was like the second one. How many? How many Friday? Was it? How many was it? Three. Okay, it was the second one, and I showed up just to talk to him. You know, yeah. for lunch and everything. He, he was he he just kept. Moving around oh, a little bit, I was like, "Damn, I got off the highway for you, bro." Right? You know, yeah. Wow, that's crazy. So we will look okay. to you in that scene. All right. So, um, and I recently saw the uh, Fat Tuesday documentary that you were in. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. what was your experience with Fat Tuesday? I go down there, man. When guy called me, I go down there. It was only fifteen minutes from my house. Oh wow! You know, Fat Tuesday was good. Yeah. Man, you couldn't do wrong. It was the chicks was unbelievable. Everybody, NBA, NFL, directors, everybody was there. Wow. And a lot of comics cut their teeth there, like um, Earthquake and mm -hmm. DL, and a lot, of, a lot of comics cut their teeth there. Mm -hmm. A lot of younger comics now that are big right. went down there. You know, but I would go down there once in a while because Guy is a good friend of mine. We used to write a radio show together. Oh, really? Which one? So I go down there. Um, forgot what it was. I think it was for Tom Joyner or something. Okay. But but I go down there when it was like NBA All Star Weekend. Yeah. He called me, man, come down there, man. I need you down there. You know, so I come down there and do it there. Or if uh, BET Awards, which I like to call um, uh, 
What's that movie with all the dancers, Omarion and them? Uh, you Got Served? Yeah, I call that You Got, got Served Weekend. <laughs> right. Um, um. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, so I go down there during those weeks because it just, I just turn out. Right. You know, because it's, it's time. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, uh, like looking at all the footage back in the day, I'm kind of sad that we don't have anything like that today. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. The impact must have been crazy, um, just the names that it went through. Um, but switching gears, um, I do want to ask you about current events. Um, okay. We all know Will Smith, mm -hmm, Chris mm -hmm. Rock. What was your reaction when you first saw the slap? I mean, I was like, man, what you doing? Of course, like everybody else, you know what I mean? Um, I was kind of relieved in a way. Cause everybody knew what I knew, you know, yeah. at that moment, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And I might just think, and this is just me, when emotions is high, somebody in DC taught me this, when emotions is high, common sense is at an all time low. So I'm really thinking about what headspace he was in. His award was next. Mm -hmm. He had got, you know, how many times have they turned him down on those awards? How must that feel, right? He's the top, Number one box office draw in the world, a young African American. He's already done Ali and done some fly stuff. Never got it right. Then at the same time, his girl is on social media saying somebody hit this. So he's got that going through his mind. You know, I don't know if he went to the bar for one, but that must have been a hell of a moment in his head. Yeah. You know, so when Chris said that, you know. When emotions is high, common sense is at all time low. You know what I mean? But I'm I'm actually really happy for him. You know, because the best thing that can happen to us as human beings is that we experience making a huge mistake. You know what I mean? And it brings us it brings us closer to being a better character. Yeah. You know what I mean? Will is way up there. Will is way up there. You know, you get way up there. Uh, I'm way I've been way up there. The, the the air gets thin up there, man. The air the air gets thin up there. You know, you make funny decisions up there. You know what I mean? So so, thank God it may not get you know whatever. He he's got a chance to. When I went through my downward sp downward spirals and my my personal stuff, I came back to In Living Color and Takia Christamar told me, well she said, um, well at least you know what your weaknesses are now. You know. At least you know what your weaknesses are now. And um, Chris was a was a class act. Definitely. You know what I mean? Yeah. Plus he couldn't do nothing because <laughs> the dude kind of big. You push Chris into a, a to a, a table full of desserts and they take him to the hospital. Right. You know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. like it's like he's not that kind of person that fights people. Yeah. You know what I mean? So everybody know if Fifty was up there, you know, just, right. you know, Will might have been just laughing. Yeah. Like, Woo! Hey, man! Well, woo! That was a good one. <laughs> that was a good one, GIJ. Oh my yeah. man, we might do a movie about that. You right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, do you think um, that incident changed comedy in any way? No, mm -hmm. nah. Now we at risk. Always. No matter what, it was a white dude sitting in the audience. I was like, "This is my last show." <laughs> you know, because you never know, man. Yeah. You know, you never know. Mm -hmm. People are oh, people are, 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 are opening fire in elementary schools and killing little children. Mm -hmm. You know we're like easier you know what I mean so we're already at risk yeah. but that's that's this this stand-up comedy is a risk Always. you know I've had it all happen to me I've had a fight on stage really yeah I've had a like fight on stage days, on the come up? yeah no, on the come up I had a fight on stage I had a fight comics whatever you know just you know a woman died at my show what that I invited to the show like while you were on stage in the middle of the performance? In the middle of the performance, man. She died, man, and I invited her to the show, too. Wow. Yeah. The show didn't continue, obviously. We we had to, you know, everybody filed out. I have I have faith in mankind because it wasn't a dry eye in the house. Not one person thought it was funny. And this black girl walked up to me. She told me, isn't that beautiful? And I was like, what are you talking about? She said, of all of the ways God could have walked her up to heaven, he could have can he could have chose cancer, murder, car accident, burned in the house or whatever. He chose your show and your laughter, you know. But I was still feeling crazy about it. So I saw Smokey Robinson on the plane. 
So I went to him, I said, he's a vet, he's been around 70 years. I want to ask him if this ever happened to him. And I went to him, I said, does this ever happen to you? He said, nah, man. He said, but invite all your enemies to the show because um, you killing them, baby. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. <laughs> Definitely. You know, yeah. yeah. So uh, have you seen a T.I. do stand-up? I haven't. I haven't. Yeah, I'm surprised he hasn't stopped. Playing. I want to. Definitely. He's great. Yeah. No, I'd like to see lynchings. Definitely. So, um, yeah. I don't know why some people have a problem with people like switching over genres and everything. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I feel like we've seen it before. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have a problem with that, right? Like how people make a name for themselves as a megastar in one and then kind of... Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody, everybody does it. But, you know, uh, you know, I think the best way you can get good at comedy is you got to tell nobody you're doing it. Mm. Just go and do it. Definitely. You can go to clubs and stuff and late at night and go in a room and do this and do that and do that and people, you know, that's how you build it up. Yeah. At his you know? stature, it's kind of hard though because I you know if he's performing in a bar uh -huh. and they just introduce T.I., everyone's already got their phones out. Right, so right. I've seen like a bunch of like viral footage. Yeah, but you know, still, there's places you you go where people ain't like that. You, you can just go in, he can just go in and they can just think it's another light-skinned Negro coming yeah. in. Yeah, <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe but I wish him luck though. Definitely. I wish him luck though. Yeah. And he knew who I was though. Really? He knew who I was. When was this? I was at um me and Mike Epps we were on tour. And I was next to him and I was talking to him. And he was like, Yeah, 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 yeah. This was recently? Yeah, yeah, nah, it was just kind of years back. And I was like, he was like, Yeah, yeah, okay, 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 okay. He was kinda of hushing me. I was like, does he know I was on the show? All right. You know what I mean? It's all good though, because I don't really know him, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I seen him later. Right. I seen him later, like uh, a couple months later. He's like, "Hey, what's up, man?" So uh -huh. maybe I was having a moment. Maybe it's hard. It's hard to tell. Man. Yeah, you didn't bring it up. Yeah, it's hard to tell. Yeah. Nah, nah. Oh yeah. So, um, so we're just gonna have only one more question. I just okay, okay. Congratulate you on um, the Proud Family season two. Said, so, um, how did that roll? Fide, where you at? Sugar Mama, I done told you all that. Everybody stop it for one minute. Ain't nobody gonna do nothing. And Fide, you ain't going with that. You are not going out there with that on. <laughs> Back like a I'm serious, Fide. Mama! <laughs> Judy! I'm going to break these cameras. Right. That's amazing right there. <laughs> so uh, what was it like? Uh, how'd you get that role of Oscar Proud? I just went in. Ralph knew who I was, the executive producer. Bruce knew who I was. So they gave me this cardboard cutout of Oscar. And they said, man, take that home and then come back and tell me how he sounds. And... And I went into the booth and they were like, no, go. After 10 minutes, it was like, it was rolling. Yeah. So you got it, man. Right. Yeah. That's all it took. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's beautiful because my daughters were eight and 10 when it came out. Mm -hmm. So now they're like 34, 29. And now my daughters now are watching it. So I got both. And I'm the real Oscar Proud, bro. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm the real Oscar Proud. Penny is starting to grow body parts. I went through that with my girls and everything. I'm like, where are you going? Right. Well, they, or, or I went from having my daughters with my best friends to, Dad, can I ask you to leave my room? I'm, I'm like, oh, okay, I'll be out there. Yeah. Yeah, okay, because I'm on the phone. Right. You know, I went from, Daddy, let's go and play to, excuse me, Dad, but I'm on the phone right now. <laughs> That's how it always happens. Like, okay. You may be out there. I want you to just leave now. You know? Yeah. Do you ever put moments um, that happen in your life into the show? Uh, not really because it's written so well. That show is written from every single line. But I'm going to tell you this, though. What's that little boy name? The little, little, I don't, I want to say the right word so I don't get canceled. He like guys. How? Huh? The one who got all the songs. He's real hot. Remember he had the, the video? Yeah, 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 yeah. Had, had a video with all the naked dudes yeah, dancing, you know? The yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you, the episode with him is crazy. <laughs> it's the funniest thing i ever seen. You got to see the episode we did with, with Nas X. Okay. You got to see it. Everybody it's crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we're, 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 in, we're, the thing I love about the Proud family right now is we're real with it. LBG, LBG. How, how do we say it? There you go. I always leave out the T, see? See, people gonna hurt me, see? They gonna hurt me in here. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> it's just what the world is now. Yeah. Everybody's included in our show, man. It's, it's, it, and it makes it, it makes it really good. Definitely, that's great. Yeah, yeah. Um, I usually have just one final question. LBGQ2. 
cute. <laughs> I mean, one more time. L B G Q L B G T Q L G L G B T Q too. I mean, yeah. <laughs> they know what I'm talking about. All I gotta do is just ask my daughter. Right. <laughs> so, um, if there's one movie like growing up, one comedy movie, one sitcom that you mm -hmm. recommend, or even that inspired you to do comedy, what were those movies and those sitcoms? Ah, uh, movies that inspired me to do it. It wasn't a comedy. Yeah, it was a comedy. Coolie High. Really? Coolie High, man. Yeah, Coolie High. Cool. Um, TV show. Probably the Richard Pryor show, but nobody really oh, saw it because we only had eight, eight episodes. Oh, eight? Okay. Yeah, that and the Flip Wilson show. But I used to watch a lot of Carol Burnett. Mm -hmm. And I was one of them kids. I watched I watched everything. Yeah, you can see how that transition oh, yeah. in color. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So, well, Tommy, uh, that concludes the interview with Comedy Hype. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, have a great show. All right. Thank you, man. Appreciate you.